Hello, my name is Bill Bowen. I'm the writer and director of the short documentary film you're now watching, and as well, the full-length film, which will follow and come out in the winter of 2009, 2010. This is Tasha Cram. I found out that my daughter had been murdered a month after, a month after she died. At the age of 19, she had a baby, and the baby had a thyroidal condition that required a very expensive and specific type of medication. Tasha left Washington State because of an abusive relationship she was in and she traveled to Oregon in order to try to obtain medical insurance for her child so that she could get that vitally needed medicine. Instead, the state of Oregon, CPS, charged her with medical neglect when she asked for that help and took her child from her. Tasha was told that her daughter would be placed either with the foster parents, who Tasha knew loved the little girl and would take care of her, or with her aunt in Washington State who had a licensed medical foster home and Tasha was quite comfortable with that. Instead, unbeknownst to her, the little girl was sent to live with an aunt and uncle of the abusive father in Mexico. I was born and raised in the United States. My daughter was born here in Hillsboro, Oregon at Tuolity Valley Hospital. I honestly didn't think it was possible for them to deport a US citizen. The original story was that my daughter had died of asthma. She's got a periorbital, which means around the eyes. That was purposeful, somebody had hit that. A child to get bruises around the kidneys, somebody had to hit her. On the abdomen, somebody had to hit her. Lacerations to the kidneys, somebody had to hit her. Violent force trauma, and shows no self-defensive wounds, which means, you know, the girl has been used to this for a while, so she just allowed it to occur, because it was her fault, she would think. Little Adriana was being tortured on a daily basis. She was coming to school with cuts and bruises. Um, when she was asked, where did you get the cuts and bruises? She told the teachers that the mosquito had done it. Uh, mosquitoes don't carry bats. When neighbors felt sympathetic for her and offered her food, one time she was offered soup, which she accepted and ate, and she had both of her hands placed onto a hot stove. Once they were burned, the aunt and uncle then rubbed toothpaste into them to teach her not to take food from people.
In the case of Haley Gray, who was four years old when she baked to death in a van, she was in the custody of her mother. The ex-husband sued CPS and the court and the jury ultimately found that CPS was 51% responsible for the death of little Haley and that the mother was 49% responsible. DHS took into custody the three small sons of that same father and they placed those three boys back with the very woman, the ex-wife, who'd had custody of Haley when she baked to death in that van.